In the year 1944, the Moscow Armistice was signed by Finland and the Soviet Union, which ended the Continuation War. The treaty demanded that Finland break diplomatic ties with Germany and expel or disarm any German soldiers remaining in Finland. This led the German forces to retaliate against the Finns, leading to the Lapland War. Deep in the wilderness of Lapland lives a retired commando, Atami Korpi, with his horse and his faithful Bedlington Terrier. Atami spends his days panning and digging in search of gold, and even though the war continues, Atami observes it from a distance. He doesn't care anymore, as the war has taken his everything. His days look monotonous, with him digging for most of the day, until one day when he hits the jackpot and discovers a large gold deposit. He breaks the gold rocks into nuggets and gets ready to leave his camp after mounting his find on the horse and leaves for the nearest town with his dog by his side. The next morning, while Atami's journey continues, he encounters an armed German soldier platoon led by Callus SS Obersturm Banfuhrer Bruno Heldorf and his subordinate Wolf, who are destroying everything in their path as they are retreating and have taken several Finnish women captive. The merciless German soldiers use these women to satisfy their malicious intentions. Atami doesn't interest Bruno, and he lets him pass, as he knows with the situation around them, Atami is a dead man walking. Atami continues his journey and is soon approached by a second group of soldiers, one of whom finds he's carrying gold with him. One roughs him around while others spring on his bag of gold, but Atami stays calm and signals his dog to run away prompting the soldiers to start shooting at it. Fortunately, the dog survives. Unfortunately for the soldiers, Atami goes full John Wick on them all. Alerted by the gunshots, Bruno returns and finds the carnage. Upon investigation, he finds a gold nugget in one of the dying soldiers' hands and determines whose doing it must have been. Bruno pursues Atami in his tank and soon catches up before shooting him with a cannon. While Wolf shoots him with a machine gun but misses, they suddenly stop as if waiting for something sinister to happen. And then, it happens. Atami's horse steps on a landmine and is instantly killed. Atami wakes up after the impact, covered in blood, and mourns the loss of his beloved horse. He soon realizes he is on a minefield, and Bruno has arrived with his cavalry. Atami quickly gathers the gold pieces as the men prepare to shoot him, but Bruno stops them and takes sadistic pleasure in Atami's helpless state as Atami gathers the gold. But to his surprise, Atami throws a rock at a landmine nearby, and it goes off, creating a smoke screen in the cover of which Atami escapes. Bruno sends some of his soldiers after him, but they all just end up being all over the place. Bruno decides to use two of the captive women to walk ahead of them while crossing the minefield, ensuring a clear path. Seeing one of the girls panic, Aino, another Finnish captive, volunteers to take her place and lead the way. While they make their way, Wolf finds out information about Atami's dog tag they found at the scene. He relays the information to Bruno and tells him that their general has ordered them to turn back and head to Norway immediately. He adds that the general thinks they were lucky not to have been killed by Atami Korpi, the most feared commando of his Finnish unit. He had fought in the Winter War, and after losing his family to the Russians, he became a ruthless, vengeful soldier known as the legendary one-man death squad, nicknamed Koshai, the immortal with over 300 Russian kills in his name. However, Bruno defies his superior's orders and decides to continue chasing Atami because he knows well once they're back, they will be hanged, but the gold Atami is carrying could be their way out. On the other hand, a wounded and exhausted Atami finds a place behind a burnt truck to rest and tend to his gunshot wounds. Surprisingly, Atami's dog finds him and comes running down to him. Atami rests, but only for a while when the approaching platoon suddenly wakes him up. With their sniffer dogs high on his trail, Atami swiftly makes his way under one of the moving trucks and punctures the fuel tank to douse himself in the gasoline to mask his scent. But the leak is discovered by the platoon following the truck and they stop to inspect it. Atami seizes the opportunity to flee, but the soldiers see him and Wolf fires at him, injuring his leg. 
Bruno wants to see Atami suffer and asks the dogs to be released, and as the dogs charge at Atami, he lights himself on fire and keeps the dogs from attacking him and, amidst the shower of bullets, dives into the nearby lake. Bruno and the other soldiers wait for him to come out of the water for air and shoot at him, and believing they got him, they send some soldiers on a boat to retrieve the gold. Atami kills them by slitting their throats and breathing the air released from their necks. The last soldier on the boat gets scared of the underwater oxygen vampire and starts rowing away but is shot dead by Wolf as a punishment for desertion. Atami uses the dead soldier as his shield from the gunfire as he reaches the other side of the lake. Meanwhile, Atami's dog is still on the opposite side and whines for his master. Bruno takes it along and asks his soldiers to find him a boat. Atami continues walking and reaches a town that has been left to burn by the Germans, and upon walking further, discovers ruins of a petrol pump where he decides to take shelter for the night. As he closes his eyes, the cries of women and children haunt him till he finally falls unconscious. He is suddenly risen from his slumber after hearing his dogs bark, and he walks out to find his dog with a lit dynamite strapped to it. Atami quickly pulls out the dynamite and throws it in the air, saving his dog, but the impact sends him flying several feet behind. He is still on the ground when he sees Bruno and Wolf. With a tank driver, Schutze, they hang Atami from the petrol pump sign and wait till Atami's movements stop. They then take all the gold and leave, thinking Atami is dead. Unbeknownst to them, he is still alive. To prevent his neck from breaking, Atami hooks his wound to a protruding rebar that holds most of his weight but renders him unconscious. In the wee hours of the next day, a German plane lands near the pump, and the wind from the plane loosens the petrol station's sign, sliding the rope off and making Atami fall to the ground. Two German soldiers emerge from the plane in search of fuel and find Atami's dog licking Atami. Upon a closer look, the co-pilot finds Atami alive and the pilot orders him to shoot Atami and the dog. The co-pilot takes out his gun and is ready to shoot when Atami kicks the German soldier's leg, making him lose his balance and he falls, hitting his head on a sharp-edged stone, which kills him instantly. He also establishes a relationship between the pilot's head and a brick, knocking him unconscious. Atami waits until the pilot gains consciousness and ties him up before tending to his wound and stitching himself up, all the while the pilot looking at him in horror. In the meantime, Bruno has arranged for a plane for him, along with Wolf and Schutze, to escape with the gold while the rest of the troop can make their way to Norway. Their platoon soon comes to a halt as they see an aircraft crashed in their path and find the pilot dead with a noose around his neck. Wolf recognizes the rope as one that he used to hang Atami, fear visible on their faces. Bruno orders everybody to move, and when the soldiers guarding the women return to their truck visibly shaken, Aino smiles and tells them they have heard the story of Atami, who refuses to die. She describes the will as Sisu and explains that Sisu manifests itself when all hope is lost. Suddenly, Atami shows up in the truck carrying the women, kills one of the guards, and throws the other off the truck, only to be crushed under the tank following them. Aino looks at their savior with deference before Atami arms her and the other women. Atami then kills the truck driver, and Aino takes the wheel and overtakes the truck carrying the soldiers, and the women gun down all the soldiers on board. Sensing something wrong, Wolf informs Bruno of the shooting when they start hearing loud banging on their tank's roof. Bruno orders Wolf to kill Atami, but Wolf is no match for him and is pulled out of the tank and brutally beaten up. Atami leaves Wolf at the mercy of the women and follows Bruno on a motorbike that the German soldiers left after they fled seeing him beat Wolf. Bruno reaches the designated area where a plane is waiting for him. Bruno ruthlessly kills Schutze before boarding the plane with a pilot, and as they are taking off, Atami arrives and fires at the plane, mortally injuring the pilot. 
As the plane flies above his hand, Atami uses the pickaxe to pull himself onto the plane. After tightly clutching the tire, he hacks his way in using the pickaxe, and when Bruno goes to inspect the noise, he gets into hand-to-hand -hand combat with Atami. Bruno is able to subdue Atami and proceeds to attack him with a static line, but seeing Atami get up again, Bruno is about to hit him, but Atami catches hold of the static line and attaches it to the bomb before releasing it, and Bruno falls out of the plane with it. Bruno curses Atami and soon dies in a blast as the bomb hits the ground. Atami sits to catch his breath when he realizes the plane is going down and finds the pilot dead. He quickly straps himself in the plane, clutches his bag tightly preparing for the impact, and the plane soon crashes into a swamp. Somewhere, a Finnish unit gets word of a tank approaching them, and they are taken aback when they see the Finnish women bringing Wolf tied to the cannon of the German tank. Incredibly, Atami respawns yet again and pulls himself out of the swamp, and surprisingly reunites with his dog. He then makes his way to a battle-scarred Helsinki and enters a bank where, amidst well-dressed people, his bloody and shabby appearance makes him stick out like a sore thumb. He walks towards the counter, empties his bags of the gold nuggets, and for the first time, asks the teller to exchange them for large notes, explaining they wouldn't be so damn heavy to carry. And that's a wrap for this movie recap. Thanks for watching.